What a week. What a mad media Saturday. I recorded stuff in advance this week because I'm moving. And so, yeah, yeah, over at the Times, I had to record the articles for Monday on Saturday. So we'll see how that little foresight thing that I have works out. Um, I'm coming to a lot of personal realizations in my life. Now, if you're not familiar with the format, the Podcast Weekly is my therapy podcasting session where I update on what's going on. Oh, and by the way, speaking of updates, I have stopped putting videos of the podcast at the Times blog. If it matters. I don't think anybody's going to notice. The people that watch on YouTube watch on YouTube and the people that watch on the blog, I, just, I don't think anyone's going to care, but I've stopped that. Uh, at, at, the, at the Pacific Daily Times uh, blog, news site, info hub, whatever we're calling it, uh, that's only got written content. If I, if I read the content in a video, I'll put the video there with the content, but if there's no typing, I'm not putting it on the... Because I, 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 used, I used to have the podcast there, so you could use that to listen. But, I mean, who listens to a podcast from a website? The concept is that you take it and you go on the road. So, all right, house, for what it's worth, this is the house cleaning podcast. Now, there's a lot of important information in this podcast. I'm continuing the Taiwan special. And what I'm about to say, don't worry about that. But since I started the Taiwan special, as you know, I have had a cascade of wake-up calls and realizations um, I'm realizing in my life now how much you need to know this so that you get what in the world I'm going to be coming up with soon. And I've already come up, I'm coming out with, excuse me. I'm not talking about coming out of the, I don't, I'm going to stay in the closet for, okay, now that's going to get quoted. Look, I have an energy building inside of me and I've never felt this energy before. It, I would describe it as anger. A lot of people might, but I don't think it is. I've known anger. Anger makes my skin tingle. This does not. I, perhaps a better term is resolve. But you know, this, this uh, may be fury, but that's still anger. It's kind of sort of like when Treebeard in, in the, the two towers saw the forest that had been uprooted and chopped down and he just gave out this scream and the ants came out and marched. Maybe you could call that a revenge march, but it's, it's not so much an anger. It's, it's also what in the world was I thinking? Why wasn't I acting? It's, it's not so much blame shifting anger at other people. It's, I don't know what it is, but I'm not in the mood for taking hostages, although I am taking names. I've got friends with money. This is a thing that happens to me, a lot of them. And I'm, I, God for whatever reason, has me like a blue flame and a high school chemistry class Bunsen burner. It's that sweet spot where the flame is intense. And if you turn up the gas anymore, the flame blows itself away from the burner and the flame goes out. It's up. It's literally not touching the top of the Bunsen burner. If you, if you don't, don't look up Bunsen burner, if you know what I'm talking about, I, you know. It hovers above it. Uh, I don't know how I financially survive. I don't know how. I, I managed to do the taxes. I managed to stay legal. I managed to do my stuff, but I don't know how I do it. And I have never been on the verge of almost surviving as much as I am now. 
and not a single one of my wealthy friends gives a beep. And I'm not so much angry at them. And all of them I have taught something. If, if it's someone older, then I would teach him how to teach his kids English. You know, like all, you know, we're not talking about necessarily mentoring, but all of them, I have some sort of a teaching relationship. I'm a teacher kind of or something. I maybe, I, you know, something. And I'm just realizing within the last two days how to look at someone and point the loving stern finger that says, grow up. And I haven't been doing that in my life. Only a year ago did I really learn how to look at myself in the mirror and say, grow up. Because adults never grow up. Any half-baked, semi-almost wise senior citizen will tell you that no one ever grows up. Real adults just learn to tell themselves to grow up every day, but we never stop being babies somewhere inside. If we ever do, God will probably call us home, which is why some amazing, awesome people die young. My, my 14 year old cousin was one of them. It's an amazing story in the family. I mean, it was wow. Um, the, the awesome faith she had. I really wish I could have known her better. I'm glad I knew her how I did. Victoria, appropriately named. She died first and, and I, 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 it is a long series. She and her mother and the grandmother and I mean, I know she was, she was the great granddaughter. It's really amazing. All three of them died of cancer. Um, I've not been doing what those three women would do, which is tell people to grow up. And for that, you in my faithful audience, I am sorry for not telling you to grow up. My friends that have money are at risk. I've always had foresight. You know, I talk about sometimes quibbling with pastors and stuff. I realize the only pastors I've ever disagreed with, including the dweeb in Hong Kong, they're all yuppies. The pastor I fought with was a yuppie. I, I said that to kind of a, a mentor mom I was talking with earlier this morning at 5 a.m. 5 p.m. for her. I said, you know, the first yuppie I've gone up against was my pastor. She goes, oh, that's that. Yeah, he was. I mean, Obama was kind of a yuppie. It's why he didn't know how to write laws that Trump couldn't undo with the stroke of a pen. You know, it's, it's, it's like, you know, like it or not, I'm not trying to be controversial. It's just that Obama was yuppie-ish. Yuppies are, you know, Mike in the TV series, The Office, Lombard, the dweebs in The Office. How in the world did that geek get in charge, people ask. He's younger than me. He's making, he's half my age. He's earning twice my income or quadruple. Who does he think he is? That's what people in companies think. And the, the yuppies don't know how much danger they're in. And I've gone to leader after leader, companies, business, a lot of them pastors and told them the end is coming for you. They are coming for you. The peasants with the pitchforks are coming for you. And they're like, who are you talking about? As if they're going to do like some Delphi technique thing on me to change my mind. And as if that's going to change what the would-be peasants are doing or not doing. Like whether or not the peasants are going to march on your castle is not a matter of you persuading me to believe it or not. And what in the world? Is this like think it, make it type of self-help stuff? So knowing where the self-help genre, genre came from, I am doing a hard sell trying to tell the yuppie friends in my life. And I did one this week, Dear Dan. It's on the Avenue Guru YouTube channel that I'm starting. And now you know why. I'm telling my yuppie friends that they need to grow up. I was just talking with one of Dan's friends earlier this morning and he already told me the same thing before I knew about the video. <laughs> you know? And they love him. They really love him. And Dan was so grateful. He was so grateful, but he didn't sign up for life coaching. So I doubled the price. I am determined to sell life coaching to people and I'm going to give you my Wolf on Wall Street, sell me this pen sales pitch. They're going to need it. We're out of time. So we'll have to find out why later.